Hello, we are reading today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 46. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. We are in the third week of Lent and doing something unique this word by focusing on the seven last words of Jesus. Today we're looking at the fourth last word of Jesus. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Joanne was loyal to her mother. She was the middle child. Her mother was in her right mind, but her mother was declining in health and feisty as all get up. Some of you may recognize this person. But Joanne was the middle child. She was the child that got along to get along. She was the child that often faded into the background. And when it came down to care for mom, she was that child that was designated to care for her mother. She did so with diligence and she did so with patience and with much love. Day in and day out, her mom lived a long time. Her mom was opinionated, and she offered her opinion often, whether you asked for it or not. She loved the Lord, but she lived over 90 years, and she had some strong opinions and some strong ways about her, and nothing was going to change mom's mind. And yet, her mother would often dote. She would dote on the other kids, that were not taking care of her. She would dote on these kids in front of the daughter that was. Her mom had three kids and the other two kids were professionals and pursuing their lives and busy. And often when people came to visit her mom, she would brag about those kids. While the doting daughter said, I put up with all of her stuff. But she's never said really a nice word about me. As a pastor, I've heard this song many times, people feeling underappreciated. I would call it a hit song. In my years of pastoring, I hear people often in the church saying that they feel underappreciated. People who give and give and sow in and sacrifice and sacrifice, saying, I feel underappreciated. I think underappreciation is a universal feeling that sometimes we feel like we've done good and like our good perhaps was not absorbed, um, not appreciated as much as we would have liked for it to have been appreciated. One of my friends wrote this this week, one of the hardest pills to swallow was realizing I meant nothing to people that meant everything to me. Maybe you went out of your way for someone and they didn't say thank you. Maybe you checked in on someone and they never called you back. Maybe you give and you give to your job and they laid you off without blinking an eye. Maybe you feel like you give tirelessly to your family and they don't appreciate you back. And maybe you feel old and forgotten. In our present world, doing the right thing doesn't even look that rewarding anymore. Being a follower of Christ, a Christian, doesn't look like it's all that appealing. Greed and capitalism seem to have a grip on our global world. Bad looks like it's the author of rewards. Being a follower of Christ is not as appealing these days. Our message goes against the whole vibe of this world. Words such as humility and meekness, compassion, grace, and mercy are less and less heard of and practice. It can get weary trying to do the right thing when the wrong thing is smacking us in the face. It's easy to find yourself on Funky Street. Someone shared an article entitled, It's Lonely Being the Bee Friend. I thought this title was interesting, so I decided to read the whole story. The author of this article writes, Being the bee friend means that you don't get included often. 
The author writes, essentially, the befriend is not a part of the inner circle. And she shared how painful it had been in her life being the befriend, how much she had cried, how much she had tried to show her friends that she was a friend. She had had parties. She had tried to be there for them. She had reached out. She had even had open and honest conversation. And yet she still felt underappreciated on the outside. Didn't get the invitation unless you're in the grocery store and they feel awkward kind of situation, be friend. If we were in church right now, all of us, I'd ask how many of you have felt like a bee friend? Of course, we all have bee friends, but until this article, it gave me another road of compassion that maybe for some that's all they have is a bee friend, or maybe even a sea friend, or maybe no friends at all. This road of not feeling appreciated, I think, is more common than we would like to admit. We enter the biblical text today with Jesus feeling forsaken by God. He has run a good run. He has done what he was sent to earth to do. He has set folks free. He has healed people who are sick. He has shared the good news. He has been on the journey. He has seen many folks believe and get baptized and turn their lives around. He has met and talked with people. He has listened. He has fed. He has built relationships and connection. He has discipled 12, and one of them has betrayed him and committed suicide. He was operating and working in his calling. He was studying and teaching and retreating and praying so he could be fully present. He was not just talking the talk, but he was doing the walk. He was exhausted at times and even then awoken by scared disciples. He was sharing the good news to those who most needed to hear it. He declared marginalized people's lives matter. He never missed his shot. And then they caught him on some trumped up charges. They made fun of him. They mocked him. They teased him. They challenged him. And how he finds himself between two thieves at the end of his life. And after all of this, and I can only imagine him saying to God, is this all you got for me? Is this where the rubber meets the road? Is this where the road leads? WTF? And I won't say it out loud because I don't feel like getting 20 calls about people being upset about my profanity. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? And now this, after all of this, after living my best life, after ministry, after all of this, why have you forsaken me? I don't know if you're feeling it, but Jesus got a bit funky. Jesus found himself in a vulnerable spot, and Jesus was feeling funky. It's important to not get stuck in funky places. As soon as we recognize what's going on, it's time to mobilize Two summers ago, Josiah and I took out our bikes. It was a beautiful day, and we were going riding our bikes. And then this car came as we were coming out of our driveway. And as I tried to shift quickly, I ended up on the ground, the bike and all. I think I startled Josiah. But life will do that. Life will startle you. Life will throw you down sometimes. But I didn't stay on the ground. I know many of you have taken falls. You've stumbled. You felt uneasy. You took a step back. Things got unstable. The ground wasn't where you thought it was. These things happen not just to elderly people. A couple of weeks later, we were riding our bikes, and Josiah fell. Now, neither of us stayed on the ground for long, and maybe he got up faster than I did, but we got up, and we continued riding, and we continued living our lives. Sometimes when we find ourselves in funky spaces, we have to move out of those situations and lean into our faith. I don't know if some of you remember the record player. Every now and then, the record player would get stuck, wouldn't it? And it would just get stuck in that spot. And what would happen? Well, I was a little kid then, a real, real little kid. And some adult would walk over to the record player, and they would just lift it up gently and move it a little so that the little eye on the record would get unstuck. We don't need to get stuck on funky, but every now and then, we need someone just to shift us a little bit, just like the record. Last year was the year of funky. Last year, my friend's husband was diagnosed with throat cancer. And her mentor said to her, I'm going to need you to lean into everything you know to be true. 
I'm going to need you to lean in. I'm going to need you to lean into every Bible verse you remember. I'm going to lead you to lean into every positive quote you can think of. Every memory that has sustained you through the years, I'm going to need you to lean in. Every song that's gotten you over a hill and through a valley, I'm going to need you to lean into that. Pretend you are going on a trip because you are, and pack everything you will need for this trip. Lean into the necessary, the vital, that which will get you through. And she needed everything that she had packed. Forget last year, this year was kind of funky if we want to just keep it 100% real. One of my friends has been going through a tough time this year and she wrote a poem. And uh, I had the paper. I've been fumbling a little, but I kind of want to read it. So hold on with me, you guys. She's trying to lean in in her own way too. But here are her words. Oh, I know what it is to break. I have wearied of counting how many times in this earth rotation alone. And in the same way, I know deep in my bones that God is bringing forth good, that I may never see to its fruition, but it is good forming nonetheless. Even though she's going through, even in this year, she's leaning in. I'm calling you this morning that you might find yourself on funky, you might cry for a moment, but don't stay there. Get up. Do what you got to do to move yourself from funky to faith. <clears throat> when Martin Luther King came to the end of his life unknowingly, the night before he was killed, he preached this sermon called I've Been to the Mountaintop. By then, I'm sure that Martin Luther King Jr. had sensed that his time was coming to a close. He knew that his phone was tapped by the FBI. He was receiving death threats day after day. He had already been stabbed in the chest and was told if he had just sneezed, he would have died. His own even warned him the night before, don't do it. Don't go out. They were scared for his life. They were on high alert. He was sure to be looking over his back. He had little children and a wife. He had a movement. And even yet, when he was living, all kinds of folks were against him. A lot of Christians, for sure. And I'm sure there were days he felt like, I'm fighting for good. And I'm sure that he felt underappreciated. Before many churches complained about him, called him a rubble rouser. Can't you just settle? Why are you trying to mess up things? And yet, even then, he knew that following Jesus was bigger than him. It was bigger than his family. It was bigger than his life. In spite of all the funk, he could see God working. Martin Luther King leaned into his faith. He was human, and he wanted more time. He said, we had to keep going until the end. He was able to lean into his faith, and we live our best life standing in and up against injustice no matter what. And these are the words that choke me even now. I've been to the mountaintop. I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And God's allowed me to go to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. And I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as God's people will get to the promised land. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Martin Luther King was leaning into his faith. You may not always feel appreciated, but don't stop now. You may fall back, but don't stay down. You may end up on the ground, but get back up. You may get pushed back, but don't get stuck. It may seem like your best goes unnoticed, but keep on doing good anyhow. It may seem like what you do for others doesn't seem to matter. It may feel like you get left out. It may feel like you're just a B friend, but all of us got an A friend in Christ Jesus. Maybe you've been feeling low. Maybe you've been in that funky space. Maybe it felt like I'm in the moment, 
God has let you down. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let us speak our truth. Maybe funk has reached your house. Maybe your spiritual strength ain't what it used to be. Maybe you can't see the light in your life. Maybe you feel like giving up. Maybe you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Maybe too many folks depend on you. Maybe you've been running on emptiness and fumes for too long. Maybe you're tired of being isolated. Maybe you even question your own worth and gift in this time, in this space, and this season. Maybe you feel like nobody really gets me or understands me or know what I'm going through. And I'm inviting you to lean into your faith because everyone gets weary from time to time. Know that God loves you and so do we imperfect human beings. Lean into what has sustained you God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Lean into what has kept you and will keep you. Lean into your faith and don't let anybody turn you around. Lean into those hymns that keep blessing you and you keep asking us to sing them on Sunday. Lean into that song that won't let you go. Lean into the Sunday school lessons where you first learned that yes, yes, Jesus loves me. Lean into the Psalms that declare you were beautifully and wonderfully made. Lean into your one in a million because literally you are one in a million. Lean into through it all, through it all. Jesus had a moment. My God, my God, where are you? Why have you left me sitting here between two thieves? Jesus got a moment. Martin had a moment. And just for Women's History Month, Ella Baker had a moment. Humans have a moment. And I know some of y'all done had a moment. I've had a moment. We all have moments when things get funky. You will have a moment, but don't stay in the funky space. You might have to even give funkiness an eviction notice and say, you got to go. But don't stay in funky. Lean, people, lean. Lean. <laughs> My Baptist underpinnings would be like, lean. Lean into your faith. Lean into your faith. Amen. <laughs>